This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Uh, what I want to make a start is something which actually, I think, is quite jolly. It's something called bank reconciliations. And what it is, is this. I've said time and time again, and you've all agreed with me, that there are millions of mistakes that you can make in real life, you know, when there are thousands of transactions a day. Certainly if you're doing it by hand, there are all these mistakes. You know, but even on computer, of course. I pay a hundred telephone, you, ac- you type it in, but you accidentally type ten, you know. Clearly. There's all sorts of mistakes you could make. And the more ways you check, the more ways of checking things there are, the better. Trial balance was one check, but didn't check everything. Bank reconciliations are actually the most obvious check of all. Because, is this not common sense? You've got a cash account... And every time you receive and pay cash, you're debiting, crediting, and so on. Well, surely the obvious way of checking that account is to look at your bank statement. Because the balance on the bank statement should be the same. Would you agree? Everybody. No tricks. I can't believe there isn't any company that doesn't regularly check that the balance on the bank statement agrees with the balance on the cash account. Forget loose cash. I've already said you'd normally keep that separate. But if the balance on my cash account says 5,000, surely the balance on the bank statement should say 5,000 as well. And if it doesn't, well, I need to sort out what's gone wrong. Does everybody agree with me? Now here, that, I think, is normally relatively easy. In the UK, however, there is a problem. Because in the UK, we still use checks. Checks? Checks. And it's perhaps a tiny bit unfair, but... The exercise we're coming to, you will have checks floating around. I say it's perhaps a bit unfair since checks are not very common here. But you do have to understand basically what they are and why it gives us a problem. Okay? Uh, They're a bit old-fashioned. England is, in fact, phasing them out. But because old people are complaining... They're not going to disappear for another ten years or something. America's very old-fashioned banking. They still use them a lot. Well, still does most of Western Europe. But here, I am right, I think. It's it's not very often you come across checks. All right? So can I say a few words before lunch? And after lunch, I'll see you how, how, how the effect and so on. Uh, about what checks are and how they work. Um, That, actually, is how we spell them. The Americans can't spell. They spell it differently. But, just very quickly, how checks work. Uh, And this, incidentally, isn't a law exam. When you come to do the law exam, F4, then there is law relating to these. I'm not concerned. I'm just concerned the effect it has on our accounting. Okay? Okay. And what it is, is this. Suppose I owe Inessa $50. Now here, if you owe money, basically there are three ways you can pay money. I mean, you can pay money, go to the post office or something and just pay cash for your telephone bill, you know. But of course, companies aren't likely to do that, clearly. Um, You could pay by credit card. 
Again, companies are not likely to pay telephone bill by credit card. Uh, and certainly, in the exam, I'm not con credit card's irrelevant. And so what do you do? You do, we call it bank transfer. You either, in the old days, go and queue at the bank and fill in a form to transfer the money, you agree? Or these days, more likely, you're doing it on the internet. You're typing in and the money gets transferred. You agree? Now, that does exist in the UK, but still very common is to do something different. And all I do is this. I owe Innesa $10 telephone or something. Sorry, you're the telephone company. The way cheques work, I take a piece of paper, I write on it, pay Innesa $10 Uh, you write it in numbers as well, you write the date, I've no idea what the date is. Alright, something different, you sign it. And I give that piece of paper to Innesa. And in fact, any piece of paper would do. The banks don't like it, but in law, any piece of paper is legal. But I write, um, pay in us a ten dollars, and it's addressed to my bank. At the top of it, it has the name of my bank. So, I owe in us a ten dollars. I give her this piece of paper, or I post it to her, and as far as I'm concerned, I've paid. Okay? That's the end of it. However, when in this is hilarious, when Innesa gets this piece of paper, maybe immediately because I hand it to her, or maybe several days later because I've posted it to her, when she gets it, she has to take it to her bank, or post it to them. She takes it to her bank, her bank contact my bank, and show them the cheque. And then my bank will transfer $10 to Innes's bank. You with me? Uh, it takes the banks generally three days to process. Heaven knows why, because it's done electronically. They're just keeping the money for three days. But regardless, that's the way it works. I write the cheque and I give it her. I, as far as I'm concerned, I've paid. A few days later she gets it. Maybe she's busy, goes to the bank a few days later, gives it to her bank. Her bank, contact my bank, the money leaves my account. But the problem is this. I'm my cash account... I thought I'd get a, got a hundred dollars. And my bank statement. All right, the bank tends to do it in columns, agreed. But the bank says I've got a hundred. I write this cheque to Innesa. You know, Innesa, I owed her ten dollars. I write this cheque and as soon as I give her the piece of paper... As far as I'm concerned, I've paid. Credit, cash, debit, innocent. Oh, boom, boom. I've only 90 left to spend. Everybody still with me? But the problem is... that although, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's finished, it might be several days before she gets the paper, the cheque. It might be several days before she gets to her bank. There's then another three days before the banks sort of deal with it. And so, easily for one or two weeks, my bank balance stays at 100. One or two weeks later, oh, the 10 will disappear. But because of that time delay... 
It's going to take at least three days, because of the post and everything, it could be um, one or two weeks. Because of the time delay, my bank will stay at 100 for quite a while. And the trouble is, if tomorrow is the end of my month and I want to check the bank statement, bank says 100, mine says 90. Ooh, they're different. And it's not because anybody's made a mistake. You know, I have only got 90 left to spend. At the bank, they've not made a mistake. The $10 will disappear, but it'll be later. Are you with me? Nobody's made a mistake. But I have to make sure I can explain that difference. I say, oh, why are they different? Oh, there's a check in the post. No problem. $10. It works. If the cheque in the post was only $8, there's a problem. Why am I 10 different? Oh, there must be a mistake somewhere. Do you see what I'm getting at? Now, that might seem trivial, but in fact, it's awful because you're writing hundreds of cheques a day. You look at your bank statement. It never agrees with the cash account. And you've got to sit there and say, oh... That checks in the post, that checks in the post, that checks in the post. Hopefully, the checks in the post explain the difference. And if they do, no problem. But if they don't explain the difference, then there must be a mistake. Clearly, if there's a mistake, uh, uh, the two wouldn't be the same anyway. Now, am I making sense there, please? Hello? It is a problem. I say, I don't know how many of you deal with checks here. I mean, there's somebody from Lithuania who used to pay me by check. It's chaos if you go to the bank here and give them a check. Has anybody ever received a check and gone to the bank? Uh, well, you, you have to hope you get somebody who knows what to do with a check. One of them told me I had to go to the other end of town and go to a different... I said, I'm they said, go to Unibanker. I said, I'm not going to Unibanker. You're my bank. You deal with it. You know? And then it takes them like three weeks or something. 